Hi, Janine, though. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Lynn. I have to show you something before everybody else. Okay. Oh, I can't get the other eye properly. So, you know, the other side of the eye. The right Aye. side of the eye spoils the whole thing. Even one side, it's still more. It's okay, but yeah. this is so bad. So the trick, the trick here but is. But you're going to do portraiture and me. Yeah. But I, I can tell you the trick is to start from the weak side, your weak two? side. So, so my weak side is drawing the left eye on a oh. face. So I start from there because I can control mm. a lot of the lines on the right side, but not on the left. So I'll do the left first and do the right later. So you should try flipping it around. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's nice to take screenshots of our Zoom meeting and try faces. Is that what <laughs> you were trying? Ready, ready subjects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just take a screenshot and then however the faces are, just make... draw them like that. Very nice. Good idea. Excuse <sighs> me. My Wi Fi is. But this not... one was a little better. At least I kind of managed to get water on the tray. Mm -hmm. See? Does it look like water? It looks like a biscuit. Uh, so, water needs to be slightly does it look lighter. Like water? No. It does. It does. Yeah, it does look like water. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Mm. Very good. Lots of adventurous topics. Light. Okay. So water might have a more a reflection on top than is yeah, seen. Different things. But yeah. no, it all depends. Often yeah, you might more, more white space, left space. Might hmm. work, but you must always take a picture also of this after you uh, when you sketched it, so you can sketch it from live. But also take a picture so that you can review it afterwards. Yeah. But I like the reflection on top on top of the liquid in the cup. Oh, okay. Let me That's see if I did. I don't think I took a picture. It did okay. take a picture, but that was, I think, after. See, I'll show you the picture. It's okay. quite dark, actually. <clears throat> That's not what it looked like when I was drawing it. <laughs> there was more light. I just took that, too. Okay, one second. So today we're doing... Pencil textures. Yeah. So, 
with texture with, uh, with pencil this is another thing that you can do a lot work, which is uh, exploring texture so we've done basic metal objects or different kinds of textures with objects that we know here we can um, explore natural textures or details of certain objects like you've got uh, rope uh, baskets textiles uh, sometimes bark of tree or uh, even you might say close up of a turtle shell or skin of some animals all of that is wonderful practice for texture Today, I have chosen for us a few natural textures and a few topics which are uh, very standard for like art school pencil sketching practice. One is crumpled paper, and the other one is fabric. Mm. So, here, let's just start with this. So, fabric you'll notice is often used in uh, still life. And I, I, now I have not read up on why they use fabric so much, but often the whole point of still life illustration is to explore uh, the various textures, colors, um, even finishes of objects. So while on the one hand you will have fruit like apples and pears, which are smooth and shiny, uh, then you would have oranges which are textured uh, and then you would juxtapose this against a plate which is which has uh, maybe blue colored pottery design on it or a very smooth ceramic vase and then in the background you would have this very earthy fabric so all these textures provide enough interest in a picture the other thing that fabric also tends to do is because it is, it's almost like a, uh, a solid object with fluidity. So you can use fabric to create some kind of flow in your still life, which otherwise is missing unless you find objects which have the right kind of stems and flowers and create flow. It's very important for the eye to move from one part of the painting to another with ease. So I'm just going to look for some still life images and then share with you. Okay, I'll come to that in a bit. Right now, I can't search for them. So we will start off uh, with making uh, the fabric, and I will I will begin it. I'll give you a demonstration. We are not going to make it too large. It's just going to be in half of the page, and then we will uh, move on to any of the other objects that we have. All right. So. Uh, So I'm just using a sheet today because I'm out of town and I realized I forgot our book. Oh my God, I always carry uh, loose sheets. So I'm just, uh, this is an A4 sheet. I'm just going to make uh, the illustrations in different parts of the sheet. You don't have to make a very large illustration. So just about one quarter of the page should be enough. And you can start off with 
from any area that you like. You can also make it in parts. So you could do like first a rough illustration of all the lines. And here it's just a study of angles, lengths. So we have reduced the, the variables. So you get basic proportions in place very lightly. Okay, so this is just a loose sketch of the fabric. So what I'm looking for is proportion. Angles. Ma'am, your video is breaking in parts now and then. Um, my Wi-Fi is a little low over here. So hopefully it won't. Uh, you're out of station. Huh? I'm out of station, yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 But, uh, uh, you know, uh, could, could we see the video a little sharper? If, or is it me? Is everybody being able to see the lines clear? No, we are not able to. What you can do is, uh, Elaine and Vicha, you yeah. also switch off your camera. So, okay. okay. Network may get a little better. The load will be. Can you see it better now? I could bring the camera closer. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. It's better than before. Yes. It's better. Oh, uh, so now you shifted it. It was better. Yeah. Before. Now it's better. Little bit, I can see yeah. the lines at least. Yeah, all right. So, What's the third one, Aditi? Proportion, angles, and then lengths, lengths of lines. Okay, can you hear me or am I frozen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. yes. All right. So when your when your cameras are all off, I can't tell if I'm frozen, but that's okay. That's okay. Huh. All right. So <laughs> once you have once you have created this base illustration, you can begin from anywhere to start shading this. And we can do it in any kind of shading. Either we can do brief lines. And shade, or we can do a smooth finish like we did with uh, the paper stumps as well. So now I'm going to start making the lines darker, but you can try and get these very detailed. There are several ways of, uh, I mean, several variables over here of shading. Some areas have got sharp edges. In some areas have got rounded edges. So we need to distinguish between these. The whole game is about creating the illusion of fabric through lines and shading. And it's really very easy to do if you are able to faithfully reproduce uh, tone and uh, the contrast that is required and texture. So over here you have an uneven selvage, so you leave it like that. You don't try to finish it with a harsh line. And here there's a dark shadow, so you make it slightly darker and softer towards the bottom as it folds out into another part of the fabric. And each line you draw, you must measure it against a previous line that you've drawn. So 
So sometimes when you make the rough sketch, <laughs> your lines might be inaccurate. That is bound to happen. And the more you sketch, the more you see your subject. And you're able to uh, check whether you're, you are getting the correct proportions and angles. And in the beginning, <laughs> these shapes will not make sense. The shading will not look accurate. And you will doubt yourself. And you'll wonder whether you're doing it right, whether there's something else you should be doing. And that happens every time at the start of any pencil sketch. Because um, somehow, a pencil sketch makes more sense after it is completely finished. Unlike watercolor, in watercolor, at least you know if you're headed in the right direction. But in pencil sketching, especially something like fabric, where there are multiple textures, only as you proceed do those textures emerge. Are you getting it? Yes. Okay, good. Now here, after you made the rough illustration, when you are making the fairer art, if you need to erase, you can. But only to uh, remove the rough line so that you can draw a more correct line there. But if you find yourself tempted to erase without knowing for sure where that correct line is going to be, then avoid it. So continue to draw like how I'm drawing. Use the line that you think is incorrect to draw the correct line and leave it like that and just shade around it like over here, it won't really matter. You will learn to ignore that line. At some point, if your hand is going over your sketch, remember to keep that guard sheet. Otherwise, all your hard work is going to be literally wiped away by your own hand.
Now notice over here at this point how the fabric, because it is not an edge, it is a fold. Here you have a very sharp line coming almost to an end and then its own shadow up here, but this part is light. And the shadow of this fold comes underneath and then it's more intense over here. So fabric can be very complex to draw and therefore it's very joyful. How's it going, Riva? Going, Aditi. Very slow. Ma'am, if <laughs> yes. you could please just share a screenshot of what you've done till now on the group. I, I'll just, you know, it'll be easier for us to just check if we are getting right. it right. Yes, yes. Thank you. Good idea.
ഓക്കെ ശരി Okay, I've shared the image on uh, on the group so you can see it while I look at fabric uh, samples of fabric in still life. Okay, so if we are done with this, we can move on to the other textures. So here, I, you can choose whichever texture you like. I'm, um, I'm going to show you one with uh, maybe the rope. So I just want to show you how we can begin the rope texture. So let me share screen so I can indicate which one. So if this is the texture we want to make, it's very ripe for pencil sketching. We are going to do the same thing that we normally do, proportion it in such a way that we can easily figure out where our uh, basic lines are going to be like. So for example, we identify center, horizontal, center, vertical. And then based on that, we can draw one line coming right from almost the center cross going to the bottom right, coming to the middle of the center here. And then one line going up. So this gives you a better sense of proportion. Now, even to begin with, when we are drawing the rectangle, <clears throat> it's important to figure out how, what the proportions of the rectangle are. So if this is a square, our rectangle is almost a one, by one and a half measure. If we don't measure this properly, all our proportions go for a toss. So what I will do is, if this is where I want the rope texture, I will draw the horizontal line first. Measure it either with my pencil or my fingers. Don't use a scale. It's not really necessary. So this makes it a square and then measure half of it and extend it further. 
So this will be the accurate proportion. And often happens that if we don't do this, we we'll land up making it either a, too much of a square or too much of a wide rectangle. Okay, did you get this part? Now over here again, we will mark the horizontal, vertical, and use our most things too rectangular to me. I think this can go a little wider or shorter. And then from here, this is the starting point that I see. One of the ropes goes at almost 60 degrees to here. And it's fairly wide. And each segment of the rope is fairly thick. So we have just about three segments visible here. And then from this side goes the other one. It's a it's a very um, close picture of the rope. So even this itself becomes a very good exercise in understanding proportions and shape. So remember to adjust your lines as your drawing proceeds. Okay, can one of you just give me an idea if you are following instructions or am I freezing a lot? Yes, yes, no, we are following. We are feeling too much. Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, good. If you are saying something and I don't respond to that, just use the chat. Now, the shapes in the background over here are very fuzzy. And uh, they're actually easy to translate, but if you at any point find that some shapes are difficult and you can't figure out how to convert them into a pencil sketch, just ignore that. Now, once your sketch is, uh, rough sketch is done, then choose any one of these segments and start shading them. There are a lot of loose fibers, which we are going to ignore for the time being. But you can start off with just one of these and try to faithfully reproduce each line as you see. So this, when you're making texture, pencil texture, it's almost of a, another kind of meditation because you have to remain so focused about which line you're drawing and uh, which part you are trying to recreate that you are happy to not have any distractions. And each shape matters. So the closer you get uh, to the topic, you start becoming very, 
be strict about how much how you want to illustrate and how much you want to just let go now it's important that to be truly authentic you must constantly be looking at the reference image you should just be looking i should be going to reference image and back here reference image and back here quick succession if at any point you you catch yourself trying to do any shading um uh, and your your laptop or the reference image has gone off then you are already making an error for sure either your lines or your tone something or the other is definitely inaccurate so don't assume anything you don't have to remember anything like you don't have to remember and say okay the bottoms are all dark so i'm going to make them all dark none of that is required of you so keep your brain very relaxed draw only what you see no more no less nothing else now in the places where we have these errant fibers around and fibers you can do what i do to make your life a little more difficult is make the outline and then try to shade around it by this time if you can see the various tones even more clearly you will be able to do this without much difficulty the the thought of doing that is more torturous than the action actually and do not judge whether or not it is turning out accurately until you have finished it so almost like now i know how to draw a cross so you know how to draw it's like the folds of a cross oh oh yeah 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 <laughs> correct <laughs> Okay so how is how is it going everyone
Now, in this case, if we want to use um, pencil stumps or paper stump, this will then dramatically change the illustration. So after a certain point, you can, in some places, start merging. But do remember that every time we use pencil stumps, uh, there is a danger of spreading the pencil about a bit more than necessary. So we have to often rely on erasing out parts where we might have overdone this thing. So in that case, um, the usual uh, flexible eraser is fine, but I've noticed that uh, it might not really do the job very efficiently. So there's another eraser you get, which is like a, uh, a clutch pencil, which has got a very hard edge, with which it, it's better to make sharp white lines. Did we use the paper stumps last week? Can't remember now. No, yeah. we didn't use them for our portrait. We had eyes and all now last week. So we didn't use now paper stumps. So can I just show you? I can give you a little bit of a primer no, we how to use. Yes, okay. We okay, used so the let's... paper stamps in the one before that. Before that. Week before. Right. As long as we did use them. I showed you how to make those samples of um, yes. boxes and how to do yes. layers, right? Okay, fine. So we're not completely lost. So the paper stump works very well in areas like these where you want a little bit of shadow, but using the pencil might be a bit too much. So after you finish shading some areas, just extend that line a little bit and fill out the shadowy spaces. Every tiny gray shade difference adds a little bit of meaning to the picture. Look over here, I've tried to recreate the shadows. I see on the right, they add to the dimensions, the three dimensionality of our object.
Now, if you look at this even more closely, you notice that each of these segments also has tiny lines. So you can go deeper and deeper. In a sense, this it's almost as if there's a, a certain similarity between maybe science or even philosophy with topics like these. When you are trying to recreate something in detail, the more details you make, the more details you notice. And it almost seems like this is unending. So it's like the more they discover in science, the more they realize they do not know. The more you study in philosophy, you feel you know nothing. The more questions you have. So that's why if you take, take this up as uh, an exploration, don't look at the... Uh, Look at finishing it in a hurry. There's a lot of value in leaving this illustration even unfinished. So long as it has a potential of finishing very elegantly. But you don't need to push yourself to finish it. It's a better idea to go over the details again and again and again. Okay, any questions so far? <clears throat> any problems? No, all good. No, all going well? Very good. I'm, I'm glad. I don't know about going well, Aditi. I just think <laughs> soldiering on. I don't know whether you looks like rope. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this thing, the smaller it is, the more tough it is. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like there's no place to get any of those details. And yours looks wonderful, man. It's looking like, I don't know. Probably looking okay, at the so insides of something. Insides of something. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know what you mean. Okay, let's, uh, let me see if I can do this. All right, so just to refresh your eyes, just put your pencils down and let's, <sighs> let's look at this painting. It's still like painting. Look at that. 
cloth. Now, if if you just cover your cover the fabric part uh, with your hand mm. like this, and just mm. see what what do you see? Um, so it's very nice. You see the strawberries, the metal, the mm. cup, the background, and all of that is fine. And uh, to some extent, you will also see that there is a flow in how it has been arranged. So you have. And now, when I draw these lines, this is how I see it. You may not see it the way I I see it also. So, like for example, this is one direction in which I see flow. Then this and this is the bottom of the saucer, the roundness of the a jug and the roundness of the cup. That is very nice. The spoon goes up and takes the eye towards the jug, uh, the kettle again. So there is this circular flow of lines. And that is what makes for a good composition. Very often when we see a painting, you appreciate it. And then when you have to, when you're given the task of composing your own elements for a painting, we get lost. And for years, I wasn't sure how this, how this was mm. done. So this is how you you can start mm. seeing a flow in pictures, and then you can you should take multiple photographs of various items put together. Now in this case, the fabric allows for a certain continuity, so that we don't really need to rely only on the forms of the three individual objects. But this gives us so if you've got this coming down here, the fabric lends that continuity through mm. through this line towards the cup whether or not we can see the roundness of the saucer with the roundness of the kettle or not the fabric in color form and its folds connects all of this and then you can have this connection you often also use repetition so you have this shape and this shape repeating so there are echoes of the same shape in the same space Sometimes there are echoes of negative spaces also. So you have this negative space, which is an oval negative space. And then you have this oval negative space. You have this oval negative space. So all these are very interesting spaces. Now, if we had, I would have actually kept the teaspoon a little sideways. That, that way I would have gotten a more open composition instead of keeping it parallel to the handle of the kettle. You know what I mean? So here, the teaspoon is yeah. parallel almost to the handle of the kettle. And we have this here. Mm -hmm. And this I would have, yeah. So if these are my available lines, I would have spread this out a little more and given more mm -hmm. openness. And then, of course, there is one strawberry that is pointing in one direction. So all these yeah. are the vertical lines. And then, of course, you have this right in the center. But you notice that it's not a symmetrical composition. If we take it width-wise, so from the center, this extends outward longer on the left than on the right. So it gives us a very nice triangular shape, but it is not an equilateral triangle. And in all of this, the fabric is just in the background adding interest. All right. So if this is one, let's see if there are but more. But this fabric, the she, he's, he's, or she uh, has given the, I mean, yeah. all this fabric, you can make out what kind of fabric. You know, I mean, like, when I'm looking at my shading, it's fabric. It looks yeah. like a thickish canvas, uh, canvasy looking fabric. But right. look at this. It's got, it's like malmal, but with a touch of silk. You know, yeah. it has that gleam on the left corner down below. Correct. It has a little shine which gives that just a little bit touch of silkiness and yet it's yeah. very thin, beautiful, uh, probably yeah. lined, uh, you know, malmal kind of beautiful yeah. fabric with the embroidery white on white. I mean. Exactly. Wow. So now you'll start noticing these things about the shading. How is the shading Oof. done? When, you're, when you want to show it silken, 
there's uh, always this there's a little yeah uh, highlight diffused light yes from the shadow mm. you always have a highlight and then a lighter shadow on uh, top of the fold which is different okay, from okay. cotton very often cotton won't have such a gleaming highlight in that yeah. spot that's mm. that's exactly how our studies help mm. even over here now okay, yeah this is like a almost a thick matte satin, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, sorry. I don't know why this is not visible. Okay. Beautiful. No, not really. So all the, it, all this looks pleasant because of uh, all the, oh, sorry. Because of all the lines we see. Mm -hmm. And like I keep saying that this is just, it doesn't have to be universal everyone does not see the same flow uh, and this is often something they don't tell in art college and everyone tries to memorize what is the flow of uh, mm. uh, forms mm. i don't think it's like that you that is the reason why sometimes we appreciate some paintings and sometimes you don't yeah. appreciate certain paintings subjectivity is vital to art Okay, so the lines that I'm drawing are just how I see some action lines over here. And now I'll draw, draw mm. some repetition. So you have repetition of form over here in different, different uh, colors and then different sizes and different places. So this is enough for repetition. Here I find this tall glass and this short glass too much of a contrast. Again, in very often in art schools, I don't think the students are given the choice to object to certain certain uh, items used in classical painting. It's still life stand for them, put out for them. Yeah, I mean they're almost uh, led to believe that uh, if this painting has been done by a famous artist, I don't know who this is, um, they were absolutely hundred percent right. That is not true. They may mm. have been right for themselves. Again, the idea of having an independent opinion uh, as an artist is uh, <laughs> is quelled. Oh, look at this one. Yeah. Oh. So still life falls under the, the least... Uh, prestigious category and then you see paintings like these and you wonder what's wrong with these people if this is still life oh my god look at this this seems to be a more modern still life as you can tell mm. so what happened um, I, I've explained this in the past also, but it's quite interesting to know that uh, in terms of paintings, the most important uh, or the highest uh, rung, prestige, in terms of prestige, was given to devotional painting. So imagining a heaven or a god or like the Sistine Chapel, imagining the creation of man was considered a very difficult topic to do because you have to do several things in that. It's almost as if you have to crunch a whole lot of artwork uh, or art topics together. Um, so let me start with the lowest rung, which is still life. Still life is just different objects that you put together and you. it's almost like a study that you do and you create that painting and you put it up. You can do this still life over months if need be. So you can keep that still life painting so long as your fruit is replaceable and it doesn't rot you finish painting the fruit the first month and uh, paint everything else later on over months it's fine so you can control your subject to a large extent the next topic so a little higher rung was landscape painting because in landscape painting you had an element of uh, a little less control you had to either depict a certain scene so you had to go out uh, make some sketches plan air, come back into the studio recreate it and keep doing this back and forth 
So there was a little level of difficulty was slightly higher. Plus with change of seasons, you have a certain time limitation. Then above this was portraits. So you have still life, landscape and portraits. So in landscape, you have all these buildings as well as natural landscapes. With portraits, again, understandably, the level of difficulty was higher because you have to make the person look like the person. Uh, but there was a time around uh, just immediately after the medieval period where it was considered very crass to get a portrait made, especially of yourself or your family, because um, it was it was considered too pompous. Portraiture was meant only for um, for the divine or for royalty, but as the mercantile community started becoming very prosperous they had the money and they say okay i mean if you don't like it too bad i've got the money and i want my fat wife immortalized with her annoying dog because she wants it so too bad so that's how portraiture began so over time of course it it uh, grew in prestige as more and more people saw the virtue of portraiture um and also remember this time in the absence of photography, nobody knew how a king looked or how their or the how how royalty looked. These portraits were kept in different places so that you yes, know, especially for Napoleon. matrimony. They yes, had all these, yeah. you know, princesses, little portraits brought along Correct. God and all knows what kind of <laughs> what fudging was done there. I but a imagine. whole lot of kings, uh, princes uh, chose their wives and stuff like that with these little portraits. Paintings. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that must be another lovely history of its own. <laughs> so after this was done, then the final topic was uh, uh, imagining divine scenes so you would have um, scripture which is read to people and then you could uh, interpret that in some form and create a painting that was awe-inspiring now in or in the final version why it was considered the uh, most prestigious ability as an artist was because you needed to know still life you needed to know landscape you needed to know portraiture and then you had to also imagine a face that you have never known before that people could then find the face of uh, a saint perhaps or even somebody from scriptural stories and mythology and believe in that illusion so that is why that prestige was higher so even today there are people uh, with art if there are artists who can imagine more than what we can see it's always got a higher value so oftentimes people have asked why is picasso famous or sought after or even somebody like jackson pollock who's just basically just splattered painting it is to be able to go beyond what we can do we can of course you can see a tree draw a tree that skill is good but unless you apply that and then add an element of something cerebral in your painting it remains a little mundane it remains recognizable and you get only um, that much credit for it uh, but the more you can expand it the more you can bring other elements together and mix and create something uh, of your own it it uh, does not rise up it does not become your own contribution to art so uh, now what we are doing today is like a, this is like a grueling study that you should be doing every day for as long as you want to do art if not every day every week this is one of the basic most basic exercises for you and if you can imagine all the objects in the world can be sketched everything can be sketched so if you say okay from today i'm going to sketch everything that exists we can go through lifetimes but that is how we have to look at pencil sketching of objects and textures so to that effect whenever you are out now that we are all camera ready always watch out for interesting texture 
So this will also give you something to see other than what we see with our just our eyes. You peer through what is around you and you start taking pictures and creating your own bank of textures. So, for example, just if you look around you, there will be something that will have a unique texture of its own. It could be maybe a leather cover or even an embroidered cushion or slippers or just rubber. There's texture all around us. So don't click the entire object because the object then uh, overpowers the texture itself. After you click the picture, crop the image and only save the texture as you see it. Try to photograph it in different lights. If you photograph it indoors, the light is always diffused, so you won't get sharp lines in your texture. But if you do, if you take a picture in diffused light, also take a picture in sharp light, like in sunlight, where the shadows are sharper, contrast is higher, but the, now the tonal values are reduced. That way you have two images as references. So once you have that bank, then you can start creating a series literally of maybe a three inch by three inch or four inch by four inch square in which you can start recreating these textures of your own. So the, again, the more you do it, the more you will start seeing um, different things in different things. Like you might easily see texture of wood in something like a crocodile skin. And th this is where then your imagination can come in and you can draw a crocodile made out of bark. And here creativity can actually, this is the very basic step of creative exploration. Take one thing from one place and another thing from another place merge them together, and then you have got surrealist art. Okay? All right. Now that we have spent so much time in this chatting, and you've hopefully not been looking at your art during this entire time, <laughs> now look at your illustration and see if you see it differently from before. You, it's, uh, There's a good chance that you will catch certain discrepancies because our eyes will have been refreshed. The brain has let go of all the previous information and it is gathering fresh information again. You will definitely see some more details that you've not seen before. Oops. Yeah. I will just show you what I've done, the little I've done. Okay, one second. Yeah. Ah, okay, one second. Oh, very nice, Elaine. So I'll tell you what nice. you need now is a sharper pencil. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, my pencil is rather blunt. You're right. Yeah. Do you have a clutch mm -hmm. pencil, a mechanical pencil? Yes, yes, I have. So That's very hard, but is that okay? It's perfectly fine, but you need it in very few places, Half just place. in the dark edges. And in the center right. of the dark edges. Right. It's going very well, very well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm very pleased. And, um, I like that there are some soft, subtle shades in the rope. That, yes, because my pencil is a little nice and soft and blunt huh? when I'm getting it. But yeah, as you said, I'm not getting the edges very well. <laughs> well when it's it sharp, now. you know, all those shading doesn't come. I've yeah. decided not to use the stumps because. For such a small thing, I'm not in control of those stumps. They just take over, you know, and obliterate half of all the details. <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> so I think on a larger <laughs> thing is better. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, makes better. sense. Yeah. This 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 bottle, you were just uh -huh. telling me about texture is lying here, the swimming. Uh -huh. uh, the cap is so shiny, but this is so matte. 
I've never seen yeah. a matte bottle, meaning a matte ink bottle. Really? Oh, I've how guessed. matte it is! It's like you know, look. Correct. Yeah. It's this Sumi ink bottle. I, I huh. didn't realize it's a beautiful matte, uh, mm. completely without any sharp reflections, and you know, gorgeous. Yeah. So you were looking. You were saying you look around and see textures. That these two are so contrasting. See again, something that's right in front of you, you probably would not even have noticed had we not uh, been drawing stuff. Great. So, um, there were some for... very interesting pictures I took on a beach. Uh, ah. Sorry. Go on, go on. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, the, the sand. Yes, the sand, whenever the waves came, they made a different pattern of sands when they left. But uh, when I look at it under a little bit of water, it's very difficult to get. Uh, I can still manage, I think, the shading of the sand, but to look at it as if it's underwater hmm. is a different ball game altogether, which we shall get maybe in, a, in some time. <laughs> I shan't, shan't even start doing thinking about that yet <laughs> no but if you want to it's illustrate like that, that um, huh. hmm. go then, on it's like what elaine you were saying i'm curious like the fur that i had in the restaurant you know okay. illustrating uh -huh. that under that all that soup the uh -huh. stuff under the soup was yeah. very <laughs> difficult to show liquid on top. Okay, so the trick with drawing waves on on the beach and to show the gap between the surface of the wave and the sand below is um, shadow, the distance between the shadow. There will be a few bubbles or edges of foam that you will paint or paint around so that you can keep them white. And the same edge is repeated a considerable distance away from that edge. And that gives you a sense of depth. It's very subtle and many people miss it, but that's how you can do it. In fact, there is um, there's something like this. There's a very old mural, maybe from Roman times, that was found probably in a place like Pompeii, which uh, was what, 79 AD or something that uh, Pompeii was destroyed. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mosaic, a tile mosaic on the floor where they have very curious objects like they've got um, uh, a fish bone and they've got stuff that looks like table scraps which are falling on the ground but they've not all fallen on the ground because there is a gap between that object and its own shadow. So obviously it, it has been made or placed in two different, a little distance apart on a flat surface, but that almost makes it seem like these objects are all suspended in the air and are about to fall on the floor. 79 AD, it's from that age that somebody has tried to create the illusion of gaps so it's possible we can do it i shall look at more pictures like that yeah so that i can figure out how they do it <laughs> lovely yeah. yeah okay so i guess that's it for today we are finishing a little early next uh, month we are going to start with nature are you in we will... in a uh, uh, nature mm -hmm. So we'll be doing a lot of nature crunched up together in one month. We're starting with leaves and trees next week. Uh, the week after that, we'll go into animals and birds and uh, sea life. So a lot of nature covered in one whole month. So as usual, if you have any topics that have intrigued you, share them on the group and then I'll try to incorporate that in the class. And secondly, if you know of anyone who would like to join up to do either landscape or any of these, bird illustrations are also fascinating. Uh, please spread the word so they can sign up for this month. 
Uh, I'll be making yeah, a small will ad. So I'll share it with all of you and then you can just share it with your friends. Okay, so, so uh, since... In, uh, a, huh. in a nice old Parsi looking place. Oh no, we are at the... Very heritage Club. looking. That, yeah, same kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. So I'm chairs and that dressing Thursday. table. You can never I get know. that. Yeah, you can't get that dressing table anywhere else. So this afternoon, I am going on my uh, rampage, sketching everything uh, like a mad, mad artist. Because there's so much Lovely. to sketch over here. Hopefully, I can pack in a lot of sketching. Have you explored the library? Uh, first place we went to. It's beautiful. <laughs> and I'm headed People back again in the afternoon. People have just picked up books and vanished because they don't. <laughs> yes. Oh. Amazing. It's very nice. I love Lovely it. place to go. Okay. So Sorry. I guess that's it for us today. Yeah, and I shall catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Today you. is lots of work Bye. to be done. Thank you. We haven't gone through even half of it. Yeah. <laughs> lots of homework. Bye-bye. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Bye. See you when you Thank get you. Thanks, Aditi. Bye. Bye.